Welcome back, Disc Golf fans, to the 2023 Professional Mixed Doubles World Championships presented by L.L. Bean. This PDGA major and XC tier back once again here in Jeffersonville, Vermont at Smuggler's Notch. Ace Run Productions proudly bringing you this coverage. I am Felix. And I am Conrad. Conrad, we've got a different format for round two. If you watch round one's video, you saw best shot doubles. What are we looking forward to here? Here we have the simple alternate shot doubles. <laughs> I had to think for a second. <laughs> Uh, there's also a little caveat where the uh, men will be teeing off from the odd holes and the FPL players will be teeing off from the even holes. This is a shotgun start, so we will be starting on hole two. And we see the round one leaderboard here where they have coming into round two. Just a two stroke difference uh, from the chase card in the lead. Here we are on the hybrid course here. Uh, hole two is a par three coming in at 250. Uh, this right here is re reminiscent of the round one with the tight gap that you have to hit, but it gets a little bit more hairy as you get closer to the green, having to miss the stuff that's here on the right in order to actually make it to circle one to try to secure a birdie on this hole. Oh, I didn't mention there is OB stakes all around. Yeah, there's going to be quite a bit more out of bounds on this course. We have switched over to the Fox Run course. We're at Brewster's Ridge for the first round. And unfortunately, Evelina finding an early tree kick to the left inbound still, but that's going to put her partner, Kevin Jones, in a tight spot to start off this round. Oh, and Hannah not missing the stuff on the right, so getting hit a little early before the circle one still leaves it with a slight look though kev he's trying to he was trying to put that in it looked like mm -hmm. not to line on it it's a different type of pressure when you're playing with alternate shot knowing that your partner has to go from your shot versus you know just trying to throw the best of two. Ooh, judge just a little bit on the right hand side there for clemens no worries, looks like these guys are going to both start off with some pars here to get it going on their first hole. Hello. Moving on to our second hole, course hole three, that mandatory on the right hand side and out of bounds on the right. It's really what you need to avoid here on this par three, 300 foot, pretty much an uphill tunnel shot here through this tight corridor that's going to bend very gently from right to left. There is a little bit of a down slope at the end of its flight here, which leads to a creek in the back here. You just want to kind of check your speed coming in and give yourself a look as out of bounds does creep in on the back of this green as well. We're only two holes in and we're continuously talking about OB already. Yeah, there's a lot of OB out here on Fox Run. Kev puts this up beautifully right oh, to the left. It's like that tree was almost a catcher's mitt and just dropped it. It's like a fuse here for Clemens. And <laughs> guys say our work here is done. <laughs> Evelina with a soft little putter approach there puts her right by the basket. Or puts Kev right by the basket. Yes. Hannah doing the same. A little bit of a... I wouldn't say a slow start because alternate definitely provides a whole new level and set of challenges. Mm -hmm. So par is not necessarily bad on these on these holes here. Definitely yeah. want to avoid the big numbers. Yeah, especially when you're talking about as much OB as we've already seen and, and just the, the tree kicks that you can get. Mm -hmm. Luckily, they haven't. Here on the hole four, is 475 is a par four here. You want to, Most people are going to come over to this landing area that's on the right before they approach the basket. Again, OB is everywhere. I doubt anyone takes the straight route. You do want to put your partner in position so that they can uh, get as close to possible as this rock mound that the basket is planted around. Uh, I think this will be a pretty easy bird if, as long as you can stay inbounds on all the throws. Evelina going with a forehand here. Oh, Somebody hit a tree somewhere else. It sounded like she hit one. It did. <laughs> And that's pretty ideal. Puts I, her in the I open was passage. there and no, she didn't hit one. And I still thought she just hit one. <laughs> this is an escape out of Hannah pushing. Going with the turnover. Mm -hmm. All right. 
And ooh, Jeez, that's the push too far, maybe. Part that you have to worry about with the turnover. Yeah. yeah. Too far. A little too strong there. Kevin told Evelyn he was going to put this one on the rocks. I gave it a good try. Did it's just shy of it. Clemens throwing three for his team here. Nice smoothie, and he yep. did put it on rock. There, there you go. go. I don't know who said that. Kevin says he's, he's not a fan of the next hole. He does not play it well. Oh, he said the next hole. I thought he yeah. said he sucks at that hole. Yeah. <laughs> Evelina with a nice putt there to get their team a birdie. And Hannah tap it in the par from on top of the rocks. That breaks the log jam. Solomon and Jones or Team Kevelina strikes first. <laughs> That brings us to Kevin Jones' least favorite hole, hole five, 455 foot par three. A tough one. You see the out of bounds sticks on your left and right. There's also this very pinched gap here, framed up by these two large trees, which you really either go around the right tree and then have some fade back if you're a right-handed player or try to pierce that gap directly. There's also out of bounds on the left-hand side of the water. This drop-off slope here can be a little bit of a catch-all for your disc, so a lot of players are just trying to hit that slope and settle. There's a lot going on with this uh, this hole. It's such a fun one, though. Yeah. And this, look, there's minimal wind, but there's enough there to cause a problem like this. Oh, wow. That's, that's not going to make it back at all. It looks like a tailwind with those banners, but that got pushed over to the right like it was a headwind. And that's going to be... Oh, now no, the banners are switched. Yeah. There you go. Clemens with a forehand. Fights through and gets through to the other side. All right. This is Evelina throwing her team's third. This looks perfect. Man. The shots that she throws. Look oh, at this. what a this shot. This is a bullseye. Fantastic. And Kev, the ultimate hype man, you'll see through this round here. He's just always positive and upbeat, keeping his team going. Oh, I thought that was in. From my angle, I told Chris, I was like, I don't know how that went through the basket without making noise because I could—I was just waiting for the sounds of the chains. Yeah. The par there for Hard Rock and Goldilocks. This is their team name. And unfortunately, the bogey there for Kevalina. Mm. Hole six is a part three coming in at 265. Okay, yeah, I was confused for a second. I didn't know what a basket was. Basket comes up here uh, going from left to right. You have uh, the OB that encroaches a little bit on the fairway. Really, everyone's just gonna be trying to aim for the green to give their partner a tap in for a bird. There is OB all around, just there's no way to avoid looking at it. It almost plays like an island because everybody's yeah. just trying to get to that green there. The fairway doesn't really come into to play unless you hit a tree and then you're just hoping it sticks on the fairway. Mm, Fuse it's not going to turn over there. enough. But no. it leaves it at a circle's edge. He yeah. has a look at it. If you know Chris Clemens' game, he's very adept at that little jump putt from about that range. And Evelina. Inside the bullseye again. Jeez. Just like from anywhere, like the, the previous hole, she didn't practice from there, but she just... Mm -hmm. And there is not to be outdone by jump putt Jones. Clemens there <laughs> showing his jumper in for the birdie. Yeah, Valina thought she sawed it off and was short, but that looks about perfect. Yeah. Easy tap and star frame on hole six. Definitely one you want to get as a team. Oh, yeah, definitely. An important part of getting a PDJ membership is helping grow the game. Membership dollars are used to bolster competition of all levels, from local C tiers to majors. Tools like Digital Scorecard and Tournament Manager help events run seamlessly. Your PDJ membership also gives you access to Disc Golf Network coverage for select events and a 50% discount to their full coverage package. Help grow the sport and get started today. Visit pdj.com join. Hole seven, you know it, it's the big one, 1265 foot par five. Out of bounds, 
everywhere. Uh, this hole kind of has two different bean shapes on the left hand side that are kind of bailout zones on your second or third shots. Also, you're going to notice here as the drone is flying, the very, very, very skimpy fairway on the right hand side that is inbounds kind of forces you to go across the OB on your final shot here to give yourself a look for either the birdie or the par. Fun to see how these teams are going to attack this one. Yeah. You got a long way to go and. Big wow, lefty wow. wide highs are coming yeah. back to the middle of the stable. Definitely disc. trying to put his partner in position just to go over and not do, do too much. But Kev is going through the gap here. He's trying to get across on the first. Uh, he succeeded. That's wow, fantastic. that's perfect. A lot of power on this team between Kevin and uh, Evelina. Yeah. Ooh. And right Ooh. into the tree and fights through it. Okay. Because trees are 90% air. Yeah, she found she, the... She proved it. Yeah. A little bit of <laughs> teamwork and strategy there. Evelina, I believe, going Thunderbird here on her second. Mm, it's a little scary with the OB. She's headed towards that bean. But she is just safe. Just safe. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> Clem is doing another position shot here. Just trying to Ooh. chip it up for there. As you see the moisture. If you saw round one, it was raining pretty much all morning. It has been overcast for the bulk of this round so far as well, with mm -hmm. threats of rain coming in later. We did get a, a few sprinkles, but not like rain, rain, but just, you know. That one finds the green there, so. Clemens and Hannah in position for the par. Ooh. And that hits the wood as Kevin Jones. Was he, he was trying to put that into, into the little <laughs> into the little uh, garden area. Or, or the basket itself. Yeah. They're going to have a drop-in birdie on a 1,200 foot hole. And there's some raindrops there. Yep. It's starting to move on in. Oh. Clemens a touch high. He was thinking about the rain. That's why. Probably. He thought the rain was going to push it down. <laughs> in there to clean up the bogey and team Kevalina with the, with the birdie wow. so two strokes putting the 12 down on the round hole eight is a simple but fun 300 foot par three it is a continuously turning from left to right main obstacle here is to avoid the OB all around uh, the thing about the shot that the drone doesn't really show that makes it a little bit more complicated than a simple left to right is that it is uphill. So it's going to play a lot more than, than 300, but you still have to maintain the integrity of the flight not to go OB. That's a little too... It's going to cut roll for sure. You can see the rain yeah. coming down a little harder there too, possibly making well, the grip an issue here. And with, I believe, that pink fuse that she loves to throw. Yeah, it's nice and high. It's turned over. It's like coming out. That's perfect. Wow. Maybe a little bit too a little perfect. Long, a little but long, but that was a great flight. That, that's riding Clemens' jump putt. Oh, yeah. Range. Yeah, there, there you just go. Just saw him hit one. Yeah. You almost have to, though. Kevin Jones, no stranger to the jump putt himself. A little short there. See if Clemens has another one in him. He does. Oh. Nice bird. Elevator straight down on the judge. Sends it home for the birdie. Evelina taps in for the par for her team. Putt's looking pretty confident for Evelina. I'm mm -hmm. liking what I'm seeing. On to hole nine, a par three, a tough one, 480 feet. This is one that you've probably seen before in the Green Mountain Championships, that boulder there to the left of the green, pretty iconic. 
A lot of teams or players will just kind of play a mid-range shot in the beginning and then kind of chip up and take a par here as the out-of-bounds on the right and left really make it difficult to settle your disc in around the screen and give yourself a legitimate look for a birdie. With uh, partner format though, although it is alternate shot, I'll see if uh, anybody's feeling froggy and goes for the two. I will say uh, the card in front of us had Ray, Raven Newsom on it and he just about aced it. He really? ended up going by the basket and, and hitting the rock to stay inside the circle. That's awesome. Levens. Looks like he just leaves the good. hillside to stay safe. There. Yeah. And is that a putter that he just threw? That's a putter, yeah. He said he just wanted to get down by that flat tee pad there on the right-hand side, and that is going to be inbounds on the right as well. That's close. Mm -hmm. But more of the position play there. Evelyn with a forehand up into the green, and... Oh, <laughs> For a second, I thought that was circle one. I'm like, that felt like it was closer. Right outside the bull's eye. It's a legit look for birdie here. Hannah's on the hill. And... Oh! oh. Dang, what a bit. That would have been a great two to see. Par for Kevalina. And... Clemens is going to tap in for their par. Hard rocking Goldilocks taking the three as well. Hole 10 is a 315 foot par three. Don't even have to mention OB, you see it all around. This one is perched on a hill, so you can use the hill as a backstop as you're coming in with either a turnover or a forehand, forehand shot. I expect to see one of each really from uh, the FPL as they play this basket. This will round out our front nine, so let's see how they can uh, end it. I'm gonna say two aces. Just to go ahead and ace it, walk away. Perfect. Fury on the way for Hannah. This is fading out a little early it though. It's fading, Meets. is it gonna stay? She oh, is it's just, just OB. Just OB. Oh. I don't think she realized that the OB was where it was. Yeah, she was a little surprised to find that out. Yeah. Yep, and here's the forehand. Jeez, oh, wow. Evelina. Yeah. It's a third bullseye this round. So can we just call her bullseye, Evelina? Is bullseye, that... Evelina. <laughs> what? Something going Chris, on back there? <laughs> nah, Chris kind of confirmed with his partner about whether or not he should run this. Kevin kind of gives him the green light, like, you probably want to go ahead and do this. <laughs> I, wanna, I don't know how much OB he's looking at from his angle. Like it matters. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Like it matters. <laughs> About 48, 50 feet. <laughs> Kev always the hype man, regardless if it's his team or anybody else. And they will drop in a birdie to close it out. So we see... 13 under and 12 under as the totals. 11. 11, sorry. 11 <laughs> under as the totals through the front nine. This was, a, a, again, an interesting format and looking forward to seeing the rest of this on the front nine. Uh, the scores are going to score a little bit more like uh, a regular round of golf. 